This is a voltage reference board. And the seller is Drock, D-R-O-K. I got it on Amazon. And it is, it is a voltage reference board based on the AD584 chip, which is this one here. It's all rusted, it's hard to see. But it is the AD584 and this one, the uh, date code is 88, so that's 1988. So that's why it's all rusted like that. And it outputs the standard uh, 2.5 volts, 5 volts, 7.5 volts, 10 volts. The only thing is I added uh, these two wires where the battery goes. This is sold as a precision voltage reference module and it's sold as a bare board and everything's pre-soldered which is good because uh, some of the stuff is hard to solder like this round chip here. And everything on this board looks like it's uh, salvaged parts, like the the chip here is AD840, uh, 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 the AD84, 85A4, and it's uh, sort of rusted and it's, uh, but it's probably a genuine uh, analog devices chip. So just because it's salvaged doesn't mean it's uh, terrible, because it, it works. It does work and it works well. Now this thing, the only thing it came with is um, this voltage reference sticker here. Okay. Now I don't know how real this is. It says 2.50060 volts, 5.00121 volts, 7.50276 volts, and 10.00276 volts at 21 Celsius. Now, I don't know if they just write the same thing for every one of these boards because uh, there's uh, complaints on the internet saying that some of these stickers are all exactly the same. So, uh, you know. Now, again, th that's all it came with is this, this thing, this board in the anti static bag here. That's it. And I just soldered the two uh, solid copper wires here. These are 22 gauge solid copper wires. And I don't expect instructions because it came with none. So you pretty much have to figure it out for yourself. So the we, first thing we do is look up the chip, the AD584 chip from analog devices. Just Google it, you'll find like a PDF or some kind of spec sheet for it. Uh, describe everything you need to know. And then you just trace the uh, circuit board here because you can see where it's going. You can see where it's wired, like here. You can see it's you know, which pin is wired to what. You can see everything there. And uh, so, input these are the outputs. Uh, you stick your um, multi tester here, and that's how it works. Um, the chip. It's my absolute maximum voltage is 40 volts, and it seems to work well with 12 volts. Uh, anything above 10 volts should work. And it came with two uh, battery clips, which, uh, so it came with these two clips here, battery clips, which I would guess would fit here, one here and one here, but not exactly sure how. Because it doesn't seem to make sense unless it fits on the bottom, but that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense either. This battery fits right into, uh, this is a 12-volt uh, battery. It's a A23 or 23A. It's actually the same. And it fits right there. So it would make sense that that's what it's for. Because here you got the battery clip and everything fits right there. And uh, once you power it up... Uh,
so yeah it works well with the 12 volt battery and it only draws 2.5 milliamps so you don't have to worry about it you know, draining a lot of power so this would be the battery you would want to use that I'm using some people use two 9 volt batteries but this is much tinier and it works anyway so I should mention that the chip is an AD584 KH so it had the, the, the last two letters KH and so onto the board um, you got an on off switch so it means on off and on the uh, board there's a silk screen here and you see uh, on off to so on slash off it doesn't mean that on left off right that's what it, some people confuse it some people get confused and think that that's what it means but it, j it just means it's on slash off that means it's a on off switch not the positioning of it so here would be and this this slider switch is a four position switch that uh, all, all, all the way to the left is 2.5 volts slide at one you get five volts 7.5 volts and on the fourth position is 10 volts so again the board uses only 2.5 milliamps so if you just power it up and you give it like 15 volts it uses about 2.5 milliamps is what I measured from my meter other uh, observations there, there's a capacitor here which is a 2 which is a 20 which is a 220 microfarad capacitor at 35 volts it's polarized it's an electrolytic aluminum can and there's also a smaller capacitor here which is to filter out noise a uh, little resistor here and the LED um, different boards I've seen uh, different value capacitors like some boards they the exact same board like this and it has a uh, larger capacitor actually double the size capacitor I think it's just to condition the input power so you take out your multimeter and you just stick the probes into these slots here these are these looks like connectors for like electronic connectors barrel connectors that you normally find like in the power supply of a computer that plugs into your hard drive like those old connectors that plug right into the hard drive so it looks like and then I will provide uh, 15 volts. Fifteen volts I will provide for my own power supply that I built. And make sure that's 20 volts. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna connect it now. It's All right, so I'll switch it on. 10 volts. Okay. This meter is calibrated slightly higher, so it's actually 10 volts. Okay, that's the 7.5 volt uh, option here. Here's the 5 volts, and here's the 2.5 volts. So uh, it is actually uh, accurate enough for uh, multimeters, like for home use or whatever. But you're not gonna use this to calibrate a, uh, you know, a Fluke uh, 87, a Fluke 87V, 87. And again, it's calibrated higher, so it's actually. 10 volts. Right. Now there are some issues with it though. Like you cannot draw a lot of power out of it. So I have this uh, little panel meter here, this LCD panel meter. And I'm just going to connect it. And I hope you can see while I'm connecting. And just watch the meter as it goes down.
是，所以 drops the voltage a little, drops it quite a bit. Of course, this little panel meter draws quite a bit of energy on its own. So the so uh, just a little side note that this uh, voltage reference uh, board will not output a lot of power. Again, it only draws 2.5 milliamps, so you would need you would use this to calibrate a uh, meter anyway, where the meter its uh, input impedance is like several mega ohms. Which means it will use like microamps. So this board, so this should not drop any voltage on the board. So if I use two self-powered multimeters, then you can see that it won't. You'll see it won't uh, draw. It won't drop any voltage. So they both have high impedance, which should be several mega ohms, and it. Should not drop anything. Okay, ten volts and ten volts. It did not drop any voltage, so I could, as you see, I could put two meters together and it did not drop anything. If I can hold it still. And this one, the smaller meter, seems to be a little lower than the bigger one. I had this since 2004, and this one is uh, a couple of years old, so the calibration is obviously a little off on this one here. This one's calibrated slightly higher also, but a little better. As you can see, it's a little, little better. Slightly off. Yeah, so go ahead and power your device with with one of these little batteries. All you need is one, one battery, one A twenty three battery or twenty three A. They rearrange the A sometimes it's A's on the, at the end. And uh, again, just one will work, and it draws very little power. So you keep this in a sealed device. Just make, to, make sure to change the battery every so often. Get a lithium ion. On. These, these uh, if you take it apart, it's several cells inside. I believe it's a battery of eight cells put together to get 12 volts. I think it's eight cells. Alright. I've seen uh, many variations of this uh, based on the AD uh, eight, the AD uh, five eight four uh, voltage reference chip. Uh, various uh, various uh, variations of it. So it's AD five eight four KH. What I have some of them have has an have an L on it, you know, and uh, other companies have. The uh, salvage parts and built their own, like a KK Moon, I believe, has one that's uh, it's got the acrylic box and a battery built in. Uh, some of them are, are simpler than this. That cost like three dollars. This this one costs ten dollars uh, on on Amazon. Some of them are even simpler. That are just a chip and no switch, nothing of like that. Just pins the chip, a few parts, and then like pins all over. So that you would supply your own switch uh, and other parts, input output everything's all, all in in uh, pins. And uh, so look around, so eBay or anywhere you can get them anywhere, uh, Amazon, eBay, all, all of them. Uh, it's based on the salvaged parts. This part itself, the chip itself, if you buy a, just a chip, a brand new one, it'll cost like at least thirty, forty dollars. At least like twenty, thirty dollars, uh, brand new chip. So this one, you know, ten dollars already assembled is just, it's a great deal. Of course, they get it probably free because they probably just found these parts somewhere and, and 
uh, you know, put it together. The only thing that's new here is probably the two switches and uh, the capacitor here. Uh, this one could be new, the resistor could be new, and the circuit board obviously has to be new, and the solder. Uh, everything else is uh, the chip, the important components, uh, the chip is old and salvage. And uh, this board actually has a website on it, but uh, when I went to the website it's, uh, it's missing so it doesn't matter. Right. Uh, well, thanks for watching. Have a good day.